Okay, here we have a progressive wave that's transferring energy towards the right. Let's say there's another wave with the same wavelength and frequency and amplitude that's traveling in the opposite direction. Basically, it's transferring energy towards the left. And let's say that these two waves meet and they superpose. And when, this, when they do this, a, a new type of wave is formed. It's called a stationary wave. Okay, a stationary wave is different from the progressive wave because it doesn't transfer energy. Okay, and it's got these features called nodes, where the nodes are points of zero amplitude. Okay, the part, where the particles aren't moving up or down or left or right, they're not oscillating at all. And then it's got these antinodes where the particles are oscillating with a maximum amplitude. And then we've got other particles in between, which is uh, between zero and maximum amplitude. Okay, the best way to make a station wave is to send a progressive wave in one direction and let it reflect off some kind of boundary or some kind of fixed point. And you get the reflective wave going in the opposite direction. And these two waves superpose. So for example, here, you can see the wave in the blue there is going towards the right and it's reflecting off some uh, fixed point right there. And then it's going towards the left is there, in the red, it shows a reflected wave. And when these two waves meet and they suppose, you can see the station wave that's formed in black. Okay, and you can see points of zero amplitude where the particles aren't oscillating at all, called the nodes. And with the antinodes where the particles are oscillating with the largest amplitude. Okay, so stationary waves can be formed with both transverse and longitudinal waves. So here we've got a longitudinal wave, let's say it's sound. It's got going in this direction here, and it's at the end of the tube there, it's reflecting and it's superposing with itself. And you can see there's points where the particles aren't oscillating at all. Those are the nodes. And then you've got the antinodes where the particles are oscillating with the largest amplitude. Let's say you're a person walking along uh, in, in this tube. If you were standing at the antinode, you'd hear a very loud sound. Okay, you'd hear large um, amplitude oscillations. While at the antinodes, if you're standing on the antinodes, you wouldn't hear anything because the particles there aren't vibrating. So you, it, there would be no sound there. Okay, in this question, you've got a progressive wave with a frequency of 0 0.30 hertz, superposing to form a stationary wave shown below. Calculate the speed of the progressive wave. Okay, you've got the distance between the two fixed points on either end there, 1.20 meters. Okay, you can use it to figure out the wavelength, but you have to be careful. You've got to count the number of loops. So we've got one loop, two loop, three loops. Okay, so to make one whole wavelength, there's actually two loops. So what we've got here is actually one and a half wavelengths. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 1.20 meters and divide that by three loops and times that by two to get the wavelength. Okay, so that gives me a wavelength of 0 0.8 meters. Okay, so now the frequency is given 0 0.30 hertz. So I can just use the wave speed equation, frequency times wavelength, and that gives me um, 0 0.8 times 0 0.3, 0 0.24 meters per second.